Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Bert the Stormtrooper and this is the home of That's Just Prime, the comprehensive Optimus Prime review series. I also review other Transformers, lots of G1 stuff, as well as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, GoBots, and pretty much any other toy that may jump out at me. I also do the occasional arcade and pinball machine videos, unboxings, blogs, challenges, and miscellaneous videos where my daughter usually makes fun of me. Those are a lot of fun. If you're new to the channel, thanks for checking me out. Please be sure to click that subscribe button and don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share if you like what you see. Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper and today we're gonna be taking a look at the Transformers Headmaster Mind Wipe. This is really cool, released in January of 2021. It's brand new, starting to hit stores right now. As of the time of this recording, this is a Walmart exclusive. It is a set of four figures that each retail for approximately $20. And what this is, it's made to look like the G1 figure, but it's actually a reissue of the Titans Return Mind Wipe. He's been redecoed and stickered to look like the G1 figure. And we've got a new headmaster, again, made to look more like the G1 counterpart, which is really, really cool. Right here on the front of the box, we got that window packaging. Short window is gonna show us the headmaster Vorath already packaged in his robot mode. And then right next to that, we can see Mind Wipe packaged in his bat mode. And then we got that really cool G1 style artwork right there of Mind Wipe. Along the top of the box, we got some steps showing us the transformation, how we're gonna go from beast to robot mode. On the side of the package, we've got product shots of Mind Wipe, both in his, um, almost said vehicle, both in his beast and his robot mode, same thing on this side. And then along the back of the box, we got that cool artwork, that 87 splash artwork, showing us all the cross cells. We've got all the different headmasters. We've got Fortress Maximus up there. Very, very cool stuff. We can see Scorponok right there as well. Down here on the bottom, we've got some, uh, we got a short bio for my wipe. And then right next to that, we got his tech specs. So that's about it for the packaging. Let's get them opened up and go check it out. Out of the package, the set includes a set of instructions, which is really cool because once again, it's been done in that G1 style. Of course, the Decepticon, he's gonna have purple over white. You got that grid style of artwork there, and it's all very G1 looking, even though it's for the uh, newer figure. So that's really, really cool. We've got the Headmaster or Titan Master uh, Vorath, if you wanna go by G1 continuity, or Mind Wipe himself, if you wanna go by the Headmaster's continuity. We've got his weapon, his uh, multiple things here. We've got a shield, we've got a tail piece, we've got a claw weapon, and we've got Mind Wipe himself, which is already packaged in his bat mode. And yeah, he looks pretty cool, but I have to say, I, I'm so on the fence with this figure because this is a really cool, really fun figure and a good looking figure. But to me, because I'm an old timer and a G1er, um, he looks too skinny and, and and it just it kills the look for me how skinny he looks out of the four figures this has been my least favorite in terms of looks um again very fun figure and it does a lot it's got a lot of playability so let's start right here let's start with his accessories real quick so we've got the little weapon here and again the weapon is a very good approximation to the original G1 weapon. Let me bring that one in right there. And you can see how close they got these guys to each other. So that's really, really cool. So you got that. You got the little, uh, right now it's a shield piece, but we can also do a couple of things with this. You got a little handle right here on a swivel so you can move this around. And we got a little claw piece that comes out there. So I'll show you that in just a moment. And then of course we got the Titan Master or the Headmaster Vorath, which is approximately an inch and a half tall. Uh, so he is very, very tiny. We'll get zoomed in so we can look again, look at these details. Um, very well detailed. Hard to, it's hard to focus on these guys. They're so small. And I'm um, playing with a new camera here. So yeah, check them out. So again, the details are nice. I love the silver face with the red visor. It's really cool that they actually went in there and painted that detail in. I'm really having a hard time getting focused in on this guy, but there you go. That's a better shot. Um, with the black helmet, black body, purple arms and legs right there. Articulation wise, the tiny little itty bitty head is on a ball joint, so you can move that up and down and side to side to move it around. The arms are also on ball joints, so they can go in and out just a little bit and they can go forward and backwards. And of course the legs are hinged at the thighs and at the knees, but they are together. So you can do sitting position straight or sitting position bent at the knees. And just kind of going all the way around, of course he's got a head on his backpack. Uh, it's unfortunate. I really wish they would have done the old uh, gimmick of having something that flips over to cover up the head in their little uh, headmaster mode. But there you go. Very cool. And then again, 
of course, we got uh, Mind Wipe right there. Before we get the Mind Wipe, let's do the little seat weapon for this guy because it's actually kind of cool. So, of course, you got the little slot there that this little tab on the bottom of the feet can tab into. So he can sit right there. Of course, you got to move the arms up so that he'll actually fit. And you can just tab him right in there. You can do it with the, the instructions show you with the claws put away. And then you can tab that in there and you get yourself a little sled, a little weapon sled, which is kind of cool. Uh, or you can actually do this with the claws out as well, which I think looks pretty cool. I've seen pictures of this online. I think you have to take the weapon out. Yep. So I've seen pictures of this online with the claws out. And I think that looks a little more cohesive to like a gun sled like that, I think. And of course, you can also uh, use the little handle and maybe other figures could hold them, stuff like that. Or you can plug in this into one of the other base modes or city modes from some of the other figures that we got in the line. So yeah, a lot of, again, a lot of playability and a lot of versatility here. Very, very cool. Now we can also go ahead and take these guys off, flip this over, and then we can plug the gun into the other side of the shield and flip this tab up. We can turn mine wipe around and there's a little port right there around his back that we can plug this into so that we can have a proper um, tail for mine wipe right there. And then we can go ahead and open this up. And you're going to want to take Vorath and put him in a sitting position with his knees bent. And now he's got a little slot right there for that tab on the back of his feet. So you can just get him right in there. Tap him in the place, place get him straightened out. Just like that. And then you can close this right up. And now you've got Vorath riding or piloting uh, Mind Wipe. Uh, or Mind Wipe piloting his transector, whichever continuity you want to go with. So yeah, very, very cool. And here is Mind Wipe in his bat mode. And again, cool looking. Uh, it's, it's a great nod to the G1 figure. But again, the G1 figure was so blocky, and, and I guess it's unrealistically blocky, right? I guess this would actually be more realistic to what the what a bat would actually look like. Um, but it just looks so skinny to me. But still, all the G1 callbacks and all the details are there. He stands approximately four and a half inches tall at the top of the head. And a nice, impressive wingspan, about nine inches from tip to tip. Very, very big wingspan on this guy. Very, very cool, and coming in close, taking a look at the head itself. Articulation wise, the jaw can actually open and close. I thought that was a really cool detail that they actually give him an open and closing mouth. The wings, if you untab them, you can move them up and down like this and then like this if you wish. So you can kind of move the wings around if you want. Uh, but there is a tab on the back of the small wing here and there is a slot on the back of the big purple side of the wing that that's gonna tab into. So that's, that's kind of where it's supposed to go. But you know, you can move them around and whatnot. Uh, the, uh, tap the head, the legs are on ball joints right here. I guess at what would be the hip. And then there is a hinge up here. The hinge is not going to allow you, or the wing rather, it's not going to allow you to really make use of the hinge, but you can use the ball joint and move the legs around and kind of pose them or whatnot. Uh, but as you can see, he's kind of designed to be in just that one static pose, just kind of standing there. You can also move the tail around up and down a little bit because of the peg. And you've got one, two, three hinges on each wing. So you can actually kind of fold these up and give them different poses. If you want to make like a flying pose or something, you can do that as well. So yeah, very, very cool. He, he looks good. He looks really good. But here for comparison real quick is G1 Mind Wipe. So you can see what I'm talking about, right? So you see how big and blocky and chunky this guy looks. And, you know, thinking about it twice, that's unrealistic, right? This is a very unrealistic uh, bat mode. This is more realistic. So, so I should like this better, but the nostalgia glasses are making me like this better. And that's just, that's just the thing because of age and G one or so what are you going to do? But there you go. Side by side. Let's pop out Vorath. Well, we popped out one of his arms. So that's a start. <laughs> They're on ball joints. So it'll be okay. We'll pop in his ball joint one more time. Get him standing there. And we'll compare them to the original G1 Vorath. And you can see quite the size difference there. Um, I kind of like the Headmasters when they were that size instead. But anyway, there you go. Let's get these guys out of the way. We'll get started with transformation. So we'll just take the Headmaster here. Just, we'll just set him off to the side. And this already fell off. So we'll just separate that and that. Set those off to the side. Get this guy standing straight. And we'll go ahead and get started. So... Uh, let's see, where do we start? Uh, right here with the wings, actually. So we'll unpack those, and you can see there, I mean, there's not really much of a tab 
there. They're not really holding super secure. It just kind of gives you a place to put them in bat mode. So anyway, we're going to untab these. Take the headpiece right here. This is on a double hinge. Unclip it and just bring it down like that for now. There is, is there? Yeah, there is a little tab right there under the neck and there's a little port right here under the Decepticon symbol. So you can go ahead and just plug that in right there and then just kind of bring the legs out. And what you're going to do here is this black piece is going to pop out. That's going to be the foot. And then this whole thing, get it straightened out. And using these hinges, this whole thing is going to wrap around. And this tab is going to tab into that port, right? Slot port, whatever, right down there. So just kind of wrap this whole thing around. And then tab that wing right into that port right there. Did I get everything? Nope. Foot still on there. There you go. Get that out. Now we can tab it into place. There you go. There's one leg done. Same thing on this side, get the foot out and just kind of wrap the whole wing around and tab the tip into the slot. And there you go. There's your legs and you can see most of the robot there already. We can take these wings and flip these around and these are on hinges so you can, you know, angle them back or straight out to the side or at an angle, whatever you want to do with them. So just bring those around like that. And then the arms are going to come down. You're going to bring down this hinge and then open up the arm, turn it around at that ball joint turn it around at the elbow and reach in the back here and get the fist out so one more time bring it down on this hinge turn it around on this ball joint extend the arm turn it around at the bicep and then reach in the back here and get the fist out and there you go pretty much it let's just make sure everything is straight make sure that little tab is still in place and again, the wings here, you can just put the wings any way you want. And uh, there you go. There's Mind Wipe in robot mode. And of course, being a headmaster, he's still missing his headpiece. So we'll bring in Vorath, get him nice and straightened out, flip him over. And then we can plug him right up here on the neck. And there is Mind Wipe in robot mode. Standing at approximately five and a half inches tall. He's a good size for a deluxe figure. And again, a good looking mind wipe figure. This is, uh, is this right? I thought I had this wrong for a second. I don't know why. Something didn't look right to me. But anyway, yeah, he's he's a good looking figure, but you can see kind of my gripe with him or, or my problem with him. He's so skinny. I'm used to mind wipe being, looking like a bruiser. This guy does not look like a bruiser. This guy looks more like a sprinter uh, or, or I don't know, a thief or um, a scout. Uh, but <laughs> he doesn't look like a bruiser to me. But uh, that's really kind of my only gripe with him. Honestly, if, if we're going if, if, if to throw down brass tacks, he doesn't look G1 enough. That's my problem with him. Other than that, he's and, and that's a me thing. That's a personal thing. Not everybody's going to be a G1er like me, right? So that that's kind of more of a personal thing. Uh, he's a actually a very good looking figure and again a lot of versatility a lot of playability and a very fun figure He's fun to transform and there's a lot that you can do with him going all the way around just to take a look at him again He looks really cool. I love the way those wings look. I really do like the way those wings look I love the way that you can actually angle them. So whatever your preference is I personally like them angled but you can bring them out like this if you want or you can bring them straight back like that Completely up to you. So I find that very very cool. Not a whole lot of kibble and backpack sticking out of them, unlike the G1 figure. Just that bat head there, which is really not very intrusive. A little hollowness on the legs there. It's kind of weird, you know, making legs out of wings. So, you know, obviously there's going to be some hollowness there. They, they they put an effort into covering it up with the wing tips, but, you know, you can still see it. And, uh, yeah, that's that's really kind of about it, articulation-wise. Head is on a ball joint because Warav's head is on a ball joint. So there you go. Shoulders are on this hinge, so you've seen me moving these up and down. You can also use that shoulder to go in and out, forward and backwards, all the way around. Rotation at the bicep, double hinge at the elbow due to transformation. Nothing at the wrist because of the hinge. Rotation at the waist. The hips here, they're on a universal joint, so forward and backward that far, in and out. Rotation at the thigh, bend at the knee, more than a 90. That's quite nice. And then... Can we tilt the... Didn't think so. So the feet can go forward and backwards. They're molded at a tilt, but they don't actually have any ankle tilt. So there you go. Now, weapons-wise, you can give him his gun, of course. And that is a pretty good looking... Uh, or a pretty good look for him, I think. Right, And then you also got this thing. Now, 
I'm not a huge fan of this only because, again, this the size of him because he's so skinny. Um, this works as a shield. You can put, him, put it here and use it as a shield. Uh, or you can find somewhere else to put it away in. Or you can reach down here. The way it's intended to be used is to reach out, get these claws out, and then just plug this in like that. So, again, you can have him hold this in his fist like that. As a claw weapon, you've got the little cannons up here. You can, eat, you can also add this up here if you wish. Like that. Or to the bottom if you wish. You know, whatever you want to do with it. Again, a lot of playability options with this figure. But the way the instructions show you is to plug it right here to the forearm. So now he's got a claw weapon. Okay. And while I like the idea of the claw weapon, and I give him points for effort... It sticks out way too far, and again, because of the overall skinniness of this figure, it kind of looks oversized and just, I don't know, it just, it doesn't work for me. Again, I, I don't want to, like, poop on this figure. It's a good figure, it's a fun figure, but out of the four reissues that we got that are supposed to be G1 themed, this one is my least favorite, and it's only in the looks department, just... The looks don't complete the whole thing for me. Other than that, I don't I don't want to be unfair on this figure. It's a well-built figure, and it's a fun figure with a lot of options. So, um, there you go. Um, and now, for comparison real quick, here he is once again with G1 Mind Wipe. So, again, you can see... Oh, i got to bring the camera up some. Now, keep in mind, on my Mind Wipe, um, I, I took some... I think I took some Toy Hacks scraps, or I maybe just have cut those out on my own. I don't know, but... I made stickers for his eyes. He doesn't have stickers in his eyes. I gave him those because I wanted him to have the red visor. But there you go. Big difference. Again, this guy looks like a bruiser. This guy does not. And that's really my only hang up with this figure. I Again, I don't want to be unfair with the figure. It's a fun figure. It's a good figure. It's a quality figure. It's just the look of it isn't doing it for me because I'm used to this. That's all it is. So that's my only hang up with it. But other than that, yeah, it's a cool figure. And, you know, if you're into G1... Or if you're into these reissues or the box art for these reissues, or if you're like me who checks a couple of those boxes in that A, I am into G1, and B, I missed out on these the first time around, all of these reissues are a very, very cool pickup. And I'm really, really glad that I actually kind of glad I didn't get them the first time around. Because if I was going to get these, I wanted them G1 styled, which is what I'm getting now. And I'm super, super happy with all of these reissues. And I think that about covers the Transformers Headmaster G1 style reissue Titan Returns Mind Wipe. <laughs> it's a mouthful, I know. I don't even know what to call these things anymore. But anyway, what did you think of this figure? Let me know down in the comments. Give me some thumbs up. Subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when I upload a new video. I've got that donate button up there. If you want to hit on that, I certainly would appreciate it. Please share with your friends if you like what you see. And I'll talk to you next time.